This year, Equal Pay Day fell on April 14th. And my daughter Kate, who's a freshman in high school and here with us today, wanted to participate and raise awareness about the pay gap between women and men. So she made herself a t-shirt. She's got it on. Women, like men, only cheaper. <laughs> Since she's a freshman in high school, of course, she immediately snapped a selfie and posted to Instagram. <laughs> Later that day, I got a series of texts. Mama, check Instagram. Now. And someone neither one of us recognized had taken over the comments on her post. Comment 23, feminists can't take a joke. Comment 65, I'd call you a feminazi, but that would be an insult to Nazis. Comment 102, feminists recommend faking rape. As I'm doing the mom freak out, I'm also getting really angry. Because I gotta tell you, when I graduated from college in 1991, I thought we had this all fixed. I, I mean, I'd grown up being told I could be who I want, do whatever I aspired to do, and we'd come a long way in my lifetime. In the 60s when I was born, there were still separate job ads in the newspaper for jobs for men and jobs for women. And then in the 70s and 80s, everything changed. We saw the Equal Pay Act, the Federal Civil Rights Act, Title IX, women's workforce participation went through the roof, saw the biggest closing of the pay gap, women started earning more college degrees than men. And then somehow, we stalled. Just as I was getting started, because in the 90s, women's workforce participation leveled off. The closing of the pay gap slowed to a crawl. And it's a gap that's even more stubborn for mothers and women of color. We've stalled in terms of the number of women in leadership roles in the private and public sector. What happened? Well, what happened is we took care of a lot of big, important things that we could all see. Intentional things, like separate job ads for men and for women. But we haven't taken care of, or even really acknowledged, the unconscious bias that still exists about women. And what's holding back our momentum today is that unconscious bias. Now, what does that look like? Well, Yale researchers sent out identical resumes to scientists at major universities, some with male names and some with female names. Scientists were far more likely to hire the men and give them more money. Now ask yourself, when you think of scientists at major universities, do you call up a room full of women? Probably not. That's unconscious bias. And guess what? Women scientists, just as likely to favor the male candidates. Study after study after study shows us that the vast majority of us operate with unconscious stereotypes about women. I do. You do. And because unconscious bias is unintentional, we need some unconventional ways to deal with it. Fortunately, I got a couple good lessons in that front when I was a freshman in high school myself. 1983, I'm playing in my first varsity basketball game in Minnesota. And I go up to block a shot, and the ref whistles a foul. And I respond in the way in which all the boys I've been playing with respond. What, are you crazy? That was a clean block. That got me another whistle, a technical foul, and tossed out of the game. And later that night, I'm ranting to my parents. It's not fair. They're treating me differently because I'm a girl. Boys have to get into a fist fight to get a technical foul. And my parents say a very parental thing. Well, maybe you'd catch more flies with honey. Maybe if you treat them differently, they'll treat you differently. And I said, what are you, crazy? They're wrong. I'm right. They're the ones that should change. And my parents say, well, what's more important, being right or winning the game? All right, yeah, winning the game is more important. And important enough that I was willing to experiment with this crazy idea of treating the refs differently. So the next game, I go out to center court at the beginning of the game, and I shake his hand, and I look him in the eye and smile at him. And when he made a bad call, because they always do, <laughs> I did my best to stay calm as I made my case. Now, 
I was 14 years old. I was not great at this. <laughs> but I was enough better to stop getting tossed out of basketball games. And I now know I was dealing with unconscious bias. Because of this stereotype we have that women and girls should be nice, anger coming from women and girls is judged far more harshly than coming from men and boys. Now, it drove me crazy to think, wait, I have to be nice because I'm a girl? That wasn't it. I learned to let go of being right. I learned to let go of the idea that they were wrong and they were intentionally out to get me. And that if I could let go of being right and step back and take a look at myself, I could be the first one to do something differently and I might get different results. As you can imagine, not getting tossed out of basketball games certainly put me in a better position to help my team win games. But no one was coming to them. Everybody came to the boys' basketball games. Both sides of the bleachers are pulled out. Band is playing the fight song. There's popcorn popping at the concession stand in the lobby. The girls' games, only one half of the bleachers are pulled out. No band, no concession stand. And having forgotten everything I learned from the refs, I decide this is wrong, it needs to change, and I drop a petition. And I march around my high school cafeteria, and I strong arm all of my friends into signing my petition. And then I march into my principal's office, and I say, Mr. Zimmerman, this is wrong, and you need to fix it. Mr. Zimmerman sat back in his chair and said, you know, you could have just come and talked to me. <laughs> Wait, really? <laughs> yeah, if you attack, I feel like I have to defend. But if you come to me with a problem we can work together to solve, well, then we're on the same team. You know something about team, right? Yeah, I guess so, Mr. Zimmerman. Sorry. So we started making some changes together. He went and asked the janitor to pull out both sides of the bleachers for the girls' games. I went to the school band director and asked him to bring the band. I went to the booster club and asked them to open the concession stand. We stopped attacking each other. Well, okay, fair enough. I stopped attacking him. <laughs> and we didn't go around telling people they were wrong for not coming to the girls' games. We simply changed everything in the environment, everything around them, to cue them that the girls' games were worth coming to. And pretty soon, we were filling the stands. When we get on the same team to change the what, the situation, the environment, not the who, not each other, well, then we can get different results. And we can get different results for women, too. Because of that unconscious stereotype that women should be nice, when women negotiate for higher pay, they get penalized. Men don't. But if you put two words on a job announcement, salary negotiable, you cue women that it's OK to negotiate, and you cue the hiring manager to expect everyone to negotiate. Women negotiate as often as men, and the pay gap closes by 45%. Researchers in Sweden found that anonymous applications, no name, no gender, meant that women were just as likely to be selected for an interview as men. Don't have to go around telling people they're wrong for not hiring more women, wrong for not paying them as much, because they're not doing it intentionally. You change the what, the processes, the systems, the environment and you can get different and better results for women. But how do we make unconscious bias about women a problem we all want to work together to solve? How do we get on the same team in the first place? Well, confession. This instinct that we have that they're wrong and I'm right is so strong and so unconscious itself that I had to mess up yet again in order to get this one right. Because eventually, I got married. And we had our daughter, Kate. And the day I got back from maternity leave, I got laid off. At the same time, my husband's career took off. So this idea I'd had that I'd have this enlightened husband, and we'd both have careers, and we'd share all the childcare and the family work, <laughs> out the window. I felt like I was in the 1950s. And I was angry and resentful. And I blamed the obvious culprit my husband, David. <laughs> if only you would get home on time at night. If only you would go tell your boss you need to more time with your family. If only you would take care of your baby or do a little laundry once in a while for Pete's sake. This is wrong and you need to fix it. We fought. A lot. And then when Kate was about nine months old, we took a trip to Minnesota together. And David took her across the street to the park by himself. Sun is shining, he's pushing her in the swing, she's laughing. 
and he started crying. He realized it was the first time since she'd been born that he'd had any time alone with her. I'd been so busy making him wrong that I'd completely missed that he was subject to the same unconscious bias that I was. When he did go tell his boss he needed more time with his family, his boss just said, well, but why? Isn't your wife taking care of everything? When he tried to take Kate to a company event by himself, two female colleagues swooped in and whisked her away, joking that he couldn't be trusted to take care of a baby. And when he did come home on time at night, all he got was me yelling at him. I started trying to notice out loud the ways in which the unconscious bias was impacting both of us. Isn't it interesting? Everybody thinks you can't be trusted to take care of a baby, but that somehow I'm a natural at it. <laughs> and David did too. Isn't it interesting? Everybody thinks men can work 24-7 because they have a wife somewhere taking care of everything else. And that means I never see my daughter and you can't find a job. <coughs> Noticing out loud the ways in which the unconscious bias was impacting both of us put us on the same team where we could change the what, our situation, not the who. We could stop blaming each other. And so we set about redesigning each of our jobs. We tried new tools for talking about and sharing the childcare and the housework. And eventually, we even renewed our wedding vows as a way of redesigning our commitment to each other now that we were parents. Women are not the only ones who suffer from the impacts of unconscious bias. We have unconscious bias about gender, race, age, disability, sexual orientation. And when we notice out loud the ways in which that unconscious bias impacts all of us, puts us on the same team where we can change the what and we can make a difference for everyone. Now, back to Equal Pay Day and Instagram. So I went to pick up Kate that afternoon and she got in the car and I'm like, are you okay? She's like, oh yeah, mom, I'm fine. Actually, everybody's been coming up to me all day at school and saying, hey, I heard about that thing on Instagram. You go, girl. And did you see all of my girlfriends chiming in with all the statistics about equal pay? And did you see all my guy friends chiming in and trading those creeps insult for insult? <laughs> and mama, did you see the last comment? I said, no, I was driving here to get you. She showed me her phone, and one of her friends had posted, am I the only one who noticed that kids from two rival high schools came together to shut the idiots up? I realized those kids making those nasty comments, just kids surrounded by unconscious bias about women and girls. And these kids that Kate knew, well, they had shared an experience of what women and girls face every day. And it brought together a kind of unlikely team. I figure if they can do it, we can do it. We can do the hard work of noticing our own unconscious bias and let go of being right. We can notice out loud the ways in which unconscious bias impacts all of us by saying things like, isn't it interesting and troubling that even judges are more likely to sentence people of color to jail and for longer sentences than whites in similar circumstances? Isn't it interesting, my, that girl over here asked my Asian American friend for help with advanced calculus. He's terrible at math. <laughs> Isn't it interesting? I would never say to a mom, oh, that's so great you're babysitting your kids for the weekend. But I just said it to a dad. When we notice out loud the ways in which unconscious bias impacts all of us, that puts us on the same team where we can change the what. Maybe you can post photos of women scientists in your classroom. Maybe you can suggest anonymous resumes to your employer or that nonprofit you work with. Maybe you can nominate a dad for that PTA position at school. 
Because when we get on the same team to change the what, not the who, well, then we can have that world I thought I was walking out into when I graduated from college, that one where everyone can be who they want, everyone can do what they aspire to do. And that's the world I want. I want it for my daughter. I want it for you. I want it for women and men. I want it for everyone. So I hope you join me. We're going to make a great team. Thank you.